This is one of the trickiest vehicles to launch because of three main things, in my opinion. One, it's all-wheel drive or four-wheel drive, which means there's not much wheel slip. You've got lots of grip. The second thing, it's manual. It's a manual transmission. So that means you have to modulate the clutch and the throttle to get a good takeoff, obviously without too much wheel spin or clutch spin, uh, but not, not enough that you bog the engine down. And then the third thing is that it's a turbocharged engine, which means you have to get the boost up, but also this is a three cylinder. So there's a, it's a very awkward combination and it's actually really tricky to get this thing off the line. But I'm gonna take you through all the different methods or as many different methods as I can without exploding the, uh, the drive line. On my previous channel, P Drive TV, the best I ever got from the regular Yaris, not the rally version, is 4.8, so 4.8 something, I can't remember what the third digit was. Uh, and then in this rally version, it was a different, actual different vehicle, uh, it was 4.9 something. I think you could get the same time with the rally version. The only difference is this features limited slip differentials at the front and rear. And I think that might just load up the drivetrain a bit and just make things a bit, take a bit of power away from the actual tires because it's got to go through a, a more, a, 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 in simple terms, a tighter system before the power comes from the engine through to the tire. The other main difference is the rally version features red painted calipers there. They're still the same performance brakes though as the regular model. Toyota does say it has applied some tuning to the suspension for the rally version, so that is slightly different as well. And the wheels are lighter weight. These are BBS forged alloy items. Other than that though, it is the same vehicle. Same engine, 200 kilowatts, 1.6 liter turbo three cylinder, which is just absolutely nuts, record breaking engine. And then 370 Newton meters, which again is also very, very impressive. Not only for a 1.6 litre, a lot of turbocharged four cylinders are only just scraping 350 Newton metres in some cases, but also for a three cylinder engine to produce that much torque. So you've got to think there's not much rotating mass there. And that kind of is what adds complexity when taking off because in a normal engine, you've got lots of rotating mass. So it doesn't want to bog down because it's got all this weight behind it. Whereas this, it's not much weight there. So you've got to really build up the revs even just to take off normally. This example also features the slightly superior, in my opinion, Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires. Shouldn't that mean that you have more grip so it should be quicker? Well, normally in a rear wheel drive or two wheel drive vehicle, absolutely. But in this, I think sometimes you need a little bit of wheel slip just to help build the revs and make sure that the engine doesn't bog down. But that could be a contributing factor to the difference in times. This vehicle does require third gear for 100 kilometers an hour. So that just complicates things even further. I've done 17 different runs with the V-Box on this private road. It is very flat. It sort of does drop down slightly at about the halfway point, ever so slightly. The surface here is, is pretty grippy at the start because the owner likes to lay down a bit of rubber uh, on the weekends and things, as you can see, but it does provide a decent amount of grip. It's just not super smooth in some sections so yeah obviously you'll get a better time on a proper drag strip or something like that but i find this is a good real world sort of condition that you should be able to achieve similar times on your favorite strip of road as well The most obvious launch method is to dial up the revs to you know mid-level four or five thousand rpm release the clutch pretty quickly and yeah snap go through the gears as quickly as you can almost hitting the red line with each gear the first run i did was a 6.2, 6.24, bit of a glare going on there. The second type of run you can do is not build up the engine rev so much, but just 
have it just off idle and gradually, but very fast, release the clutch while dialing in maximum power at the same time. This gave me results of 5.8, 0 to 100. This sort of method is obviously best for the clutch and the drive system, uh, but it doesn't produce the quickest results. And then the last way you can do it, and the quickest in my experience, is use a, a lot of revs. So rev it right up to 6,000 RPM or more. The way I do it is usually pulse the, the throttle. So rev it right up to six and let it come back a little bit. So then when you're releasing the clutch, you're not actually giving it full power when the clutch is engaging, it's just coming back off, almost hitting the red line. And then you're straight away on the throttle, straight away. So you do have that bit of sort of forgiveness for the drive line, just for that split second while you release the clutch. Best result using that method for me today was 5.38. I actually did two back to back and you can see there the difference 2.25 for 0 to 60 compared with 2.65 even though it was the same 0 to 100. And I think that's down to the shift into second gear so I found revving it right out in first was the quickest method but then second to third, upshift at about 6,100 RPM or 6,200. Don't worry about going right to the red line because by that stage, it's, it's got momentum. Also did a 0 to 221 seconds. I can't quite hit 200 in all cars obviously. This road is just a bit over a kilometer long. I find that if a vehicle can do 0 to 100 in under five seconds then I'll do a 0 to 200 but if it's but just because that sort of gives me an idea of how quick the car is. If it does 0 to, two, uh, 0 to 100 in over five seconds yeah, I've really got to make sure that I've got plenty of braking before I get to the end. I've got some markers down there so I know how much distance I have left and just to keep it very safe. But in this, I can just hit 200 purely because I can get off the line really, really quickly. Obviously these types of high rev launches aren't the best for the drive line, but if you're doing it only a few times, it should be fine. Just to give you some background, I was a motor mechanic for four years before I became a car journalist. So I am aware of how these systems work and I do have mechanical sympathy, but a clutch pack is pretty much like a brake disc, a brake pad on a disc. It works the same way and it is literally made to slip. The problem is if you keep doing it, it starts to get very, very hot, just like brakes. And then that heat starts to go through into other parts. So there's lots of springs and things involved in a clutch pack. Hydraulics as well, if it does have a hydraulic clutch. They start to warm up and they start to get very hot as well. And if you keep going, things like clutch explosion will start to happen. So it's not a good idea to keep launching a high rev launch. But for this vehicle, if you want to get the fastest time, that's unfortunately the way you have to do it. What the 